And we are going to contemplate today how amazing life is on planet Earth right now. Um, all over planet Earth. People, human beings, like you and me, oh, not like you and me, but human beings. Here we've got Lola God in the Gulf, right, in the Gulf. Um, a, a very different culture than what many of us are living in. Uh, we, we've, we've got Europeans here. We've got people from all over the world listening. And there's a lot of people not listening, billions of them. And their life is better today from a material perspective than uh, life on planet Earth has ever been. We live in the richest period in human history. We live from a, from a, a violence perspective in the safest period, pretty much, in human history. There are fewer wars. Uh, there are fewer people dying at the hands of their own government, at the hands of civil wars, at the hands of violence, at the, in, including crime. We live, most of humanity today, an overwhelming majority of humanity today, lives with electricity and with water. Many of us, again, a vast majority of humanity live today with cell phones and, and, and uh, telecommunication devices that are just stunning and amazing. We have opportunities to enjoy. We have, we have uh, time on our hands. Time, the most precious thing in the world, the rarest thing in the world, if you will. We have time because we're so wealthy, we can basically produce our, our, our survival needs relatively easy and relatively quickly and relatively cheaply. And as a consequence of that, we have plenty of time to do other things, to think about other things, to engage in other kind of activities. We don't have to work 24-7. We can engage in hobbies and in artistic pursuits and in friendships and in uh, parties late into the night and lots of activities that we just couldn't afford. We could, didn't have time. We couldn't contemplate even engaging in in a different era, in a different time. It's so important to be able to sit back and realize how amazing the world is today, how rich we are, uh, how, how, uh, how, how wealthy we are, um, how easy, easy in the positive sense, our lives and then, of course, it's important to think why that is and, and, and what makes that possible. And, of course, what makes that possible is the, 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 the genius of, of so many people, the creative ability of the great people that we live with on this planet. In particular... Uh, the people who have, uh, who have the advantage of living in places that are free, in places where they can pursue their values, pursue their ideas, pursue their thoughts, pursue science, pursue new innovation, new ideas, new projects. It is the world around us did not just appear as so many people, both left and right, today believe. It was not just plopped here by God or somebody. It just didn't just arrive fully formed with iPhones and cars and b nice buildings and great restaurants and, and just, it, it didn't just show up like this. The world in which we live was created. I'm a creationist in this sense. It was created by human beings. It was created by human beings who used their minds to create it. It was created by productive people, by people who built and made and created stuff and thought outside of the box and then took risks and made something, whether they, whether they came out west in, 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 in 100 and something years ago, whether they built up great industries like Carnegie and, 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 um, and Rockefeller, whether they, you know, pursued a dream and built great companies like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and uh, the, the, the first founders of Genentech and Moderna and BioNTech. 
they have made this world. And, and of course, let's not forget the, 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 the architects and the, and, the, and the real estate developers. I mean, we take people for granted. We take their great productive genius for granted. But people who, who imagine, who look at a plot of land that's, that's just empty, that's, where there's nothing there. And they can imagine homes and businesses and offices and gas stations and roads and, 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 and they, they, they can imagine and not only can they imagine it, but they can bring all the resources together and build it. I mean, I live in this amazing condo connected to other condo buildings and an office building not far and some restaurants downstairs and right on the water and, and, and the, there's, a, there's an artificial wall that prevents the water from flooding our garage and, and knocking down this building. And somebody had to do all that. Somebody had to do all that. When you look around your neighborhood, somebody had to develop and design and, and build the streets and, and, and put in the cables that give you internet and electricity and everything else. And, you know, and, and, and it's the, the great minds that, that, that think about this, that, that imagine it, that make it a reality. It's the workers who actually go and let's not forget you know, the productive workmen who actually go out there and work and build and make and create and, and, and produce all the, the beautiful thing, the amazing things that we, again, just live our lives in. This is not nature. We don't live in nature. I'm not thankful to nature. Nature just is here. It just plonked here. But human life, as we live it today, is created. It's created by the creators. It's created by the productive. And on Thanksgiving, we should say our thank you to the people who have created and are creating our amazing modern world. And even at the time of seemingly infinite irrationality, infinite stupidity, infinite maliciousness on all sides in politics and just in a day-to-day -day life. All of that is, so far at least, negligible, a sideshow as compared to all the good things that are being produced and created every single day. You know, we've lived through this COVID epidemic now, pandemic, for two years. Shockingly, for two years. And everybody has screwed this up. Our politicians have screwed us up, and our advisors have screwed us up, and our scientists have screwed us up. Uh, the scientists, particularly, who give us advice at, at the upper governmental levels. But at the same time, there have been people who've been really thinking about this, have been looking for solutions and, and looking for rational guidance. And as I have mentioned many times on the show, two days after the genome of the COVID virus was known, there was already a, a vaccine in a sense that the formula was there, both at Moderna and at BioNTech. So I am continue to be thankful to Moderna and BioNTech, not to the FDA, not to the CDC, but to Moderna and BioNTech and all the scientists and all the thinkers and all, I mean, the, the Hungarian scientists who stuck with mRNA in spite of not getting government grants and not being, getting, getting a, 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 the, 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 an associate professor, I think, position at a university and just sticking with it and now she works for BioNTech. Uh, the, the, the capitalists behind Moderna and the people who worked at Moderna who couldn't ha created this platform, couldn't find a use for it, didn't make any money for years and years and years and years and kept going and kept going. And then when COVID hit, they found the perfect use for it. And you can complain about the vaccines and maybe they haven't lived up to everything we were promised about them. And I'll be discussing that maybe, you know, as well. But they have certainly changed our lives, made our lives much better, made it possible for us to cope with this virus much better, much healthier way. And even if this virus 
is relatively mild, and COVID is, I think, on the grand scale of things, relatively mild. The technology that these thinkers, these creators, these builders have made is one that will be used for more serious pandemics, more serious diseases. And if we're smart, we'll learn from COVID. And when the next one happens, we'll be so much better off. And if it's deadlier, we'll be so much better off to deal with it because we'd live through COVID if we're willing to learn the lessons. And I think there are people out there learning the lessons. So I'm thankful for all of those. I'm thankful for people like Amish, Adalja, who I think has, 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 uh, has done a phenomenal job of calling COVID right and yet has been attacked from all sides constantly. And I'm sure there are lots of out there, physicians and doctors and researchers who have struggled because of these attacks left and right. We'll talk more about that again uh, tomorrow. And I'll have a, I, I'm going to have Amish on the show again soon uh, to update us kind of on where we stand with COVID and vaccines and the, and, and the latest about vaccines. But I am thankful to all those who have, again, built and created the modern world. I, I read some amazing books this year just recently, so they were at the top of my mind, right? I, I read the book, The Code Breakers, uh, about the, the bioengineering revolution that we're living through and about uh, CRISPR, the technology to edit genes. And it's stunning. It, it's stunning. The, the, the hero of this, Dr. Dowden, is an amazing woman, a real hero. I'm thankful to her. I, you know, uh, I, I think I'm going to benefit me, I'm going to be benefit tremendously in the next 20 years from the technology that she has invented and from the work that she is doing in, in bioengineering and in, gen, in, in gene therapies. And I think all of us are going to. So I'm thanking her now and in advance, both for being an inspiration and for the technologies that she's developing. But one of the things that came across in that book is how many people, how many people participate? How many people are engaged? with right, uh, these kind of achievements, these discoveries. Like how many people added value, were productive, were creative, and added to the value of a CRISPR or any kind of new science and new technology? So while they are geniuses and they are uh, real men and women of ability who who are really at the forefront of these things and make them possible and innovate and, and push everybody else and uh, to great achievements. The achievements are made possible because of the hard work of millions and millions and millions of people who are exemplars of the virtues of productiveness at whatever level they are capable of. Not everybody's going to be that genius who moves things forward in dramatic ways. So I'm thankful for all of them, all of them primarily to the geniuses, because they have the biggest impact on my life. So in, in spite of it being a very, very difficult period for philosophical, political reasons, it's still inspiring to me to go outside, just to see productive activity going on to, to catch up on the latest and coolest and greatest technology that's out there, uh, the greatest and, and, and coolest stuff uh, that, that, that is being produced and being created. Uh, I love tech. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always contemplating buying the next little uh, gizmo uh, to play around with. I, I, I'm pretty good at being disciplined about not always doing it, but I love the fact that people are constantly thinking of better ways. I, I, I love the fact that all those technologies that were really ramped up uh, during, um, uh, during last year because of COVID uh, have now this year just, just taken off and become more stable and easier to use and more integrated from Zoom to Teams to all these things. Uh, that, that we became dependent on last year, this year have just be, become robust and, and, and really good. So there is a lot, a lot to be thankful for. Jennifer, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and of course, uh, you know, you should in your own life look around you and, and, and 
figure out what you should be thankful for, what you should be thankful for given your life. And, um, and I'm sure there are lots of things. There are lots of things out there in the world, people you've never met that you're thankful to, but there are some, sure, people in your life that are important to you. Um, whether you tell them or, or whether you just take a minute to, to appreciate them and to think about it, it's always good to tell people. Uh, you know, justice is the virtue of not just condemning people. Justice is not going after... Justice is not going after the bad guys. Justice is not, you know, uh, uh, putting them in jail and, 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 you know, condemning evil. The primary aspect of justice, the most important part of justice, is recognizing, elevating, appreciating, thanking the good. So, Whoever in your life is good, good for you, good for your life, good for your happiness, good for your success. This is the time of year, this is, this is the period where it's, this is your opportunity to say thanks, a little pat on the back, whether it's an employee, whether it's a loved one, whether it's just a neighbor that inspires you whether it's somebody who, I don't know, a, a, a restaurant owner, a waiter, a whatever, they just do a phenomenal job. They just make your life just a little bit better. Saying, good job, well done, thank you, is priceless. And it's the true act of justice. A true act of justice. It's what that virtue really means. We, we, we tend, as a culture, as a society, we tend to focus and obsess about the negative. There are a variety of reasons for that. Um, actually, I'll, 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 I'm going to talk about that in one of the future shows about this, because I'm, I'm reading Steven Pinker his book on rationality, and it has some interesting things to say about this. But we obsess about the negative. And, and we have a justice system, which is supposed to catch the bad guys. And the whole concept of justice is skewed towards penalizing evil. And it shouldn't be. And you shouldn't in your life. In your life, the concept of justice should be skewed towards thanking, appreciating, patting on the back, the good. Because what does it mean that somebody is the good? It means they add value. They add, and since you're interacting with them, they add value to your life. And what's more important in life than those values that make your life better, greater, happier, more successful. And if you can say the thank you, pat them on the back, and increase their motivation, and inspire them to do even more, then your life becomes better. Justice is about bringing close to you the good and distancing yourself from the bad, surrounding yourself with the good. So again, this is a great time of the year to think about that, to consider who are the good people in your life. Who do you want to thank? Who do you want to be close to, surround yourself with? And who not? And who not? Life is too short to waste it. Life is too short to waste it on people who don't deserve it. Life is too short to waste it on people who don't add value to you. So positive reinforcement, positive. That's what you should be doing, particularly on Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. 
If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.